All right, everybody, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, and welcome to our September Lunch Bunch program. We're really excited to see so many of you here for an absolutely wonderful program. Our team here at Minds and in the foundation is really gearing up for a whole slate of really phenomenal events and programs coming at you. Ruth has already talked a little bit about it, but tomorrow, um, Andy and myself, we will be in Colorado Springs for a little pep rally and road show. And then Saturday morning, we'll be heading down to CSU Pueblo to tailgate for the Minds versus um, CSU Pueblo football game. So if you're around, please come on out for that. Also in almost a little, in about a week, we are heading into homecoming. Um, so whether you are local or thinking of traveling, please come on out. We have a huge list of very fun opportunities for, for everybody, um, whether you want to come out next Friday, the 29th for the uh, Mines Bonfire, we will have a table and tent there full of fun food and drinks for everybody, or you would rather come out next Saturday morning for the 5K and then stay for the barbecue and tailgate and football game. A lot of really great things are happening next week for homecoming. So we'd love to have you out there and to see you there. For those of you who do not know me, I'm John Griffin. I'm the Associate Director of Alumni Engagement here at the School of Mines Foundation. This is your first lunch bunch. I think there's a few of you here. We're really excited to see some new faces. Those of you who are regulars, um, and I see you as well, we really appreciate your continued support and interest. Love, uh, love adding new faces, and we love seeing all of our familiar faces. Today, we have a really great program that I'm excited for. Um, with this semester well underway, and the students in the full swing of things, which a few of them can probably talk about, um, we thought it'd be nice to take a little moment to pause and look back on everything that got us to this moment and the thoughtfully engineered framework that helped shape the students um, start of their journey. And it makes mine such an experience unlike any other out there. And that is what we're calling the Ore Digger experience. So today we're really excited to welcome Jessica Kiefer, who is the director of the New Student and Transition Services Program, also known as NEST, as well as some of her student leaders. We have Ben Parker with us, who is a senior in geological engineering, and Mariana Moreau, who is a junior in mechanical engineering. Um, and they're all going to share some information and insight about the early stages of the ore digger experiences, things like ore digger camp, fall kickoff, the M climb, and all those other really great events. And I know a few of you here, like Gary, were integral in having that alumni presence. So we really appreciate it. And um, it's going to be really great to hear from them all about everything that they have accomplished this past year, as well as what they're thinking and planning going forward. Before we get started, just a few quick minders, reminders. Um, any questions that you have submitted with your RSVP, RSVP we have shared with our panelists today. Um, and if during this program you think of a question, please add that to the chat. We don't want to lose that. Um, also, later towards the end, I know they will open it up for a Q&A. So make sure you keep that question top of your mind. We want to make sure we answer it. All of these Lunch Bunch programs today and all the past ones are recorded and have been saved onto the Foundation YouTube channel. You can find all of that at weare.minds.edu, which is the Foundation website. So if you missed any, any of them or if there's something that we talked about today that was really interesting and that you want to share, we know plenty of people always tune back in to see some of these videos and refresh their memory. So you can find everything back on our website there. Um, and as always, if you have any future ideas for speakers or topics and you want to know more about them, just let Ruth know or me know. Um, you can email us. You can message us on here. We're always open for ideas and would love to provide you with that information and um, connection that you're seeking. So without further, ado, without further ado, please help me in welcoming Jessica Kiefer, Mariana, and Ben to the front of the room. We're really excited. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, John. Um, so thank you all so much for being here. We're really excited to talk about our programs. Um, just to introduce myself again, my name is Jessica Kiefer. I am the Director of New Student and Transition Services. 
I have been on campus now for 12 years, um, which blows my mind every time I think about it. Um, I started out all those years ago as the undergraduate program manager in the College of Engineering and Computational Sciences. If any of you remember that blip in time when we had colleges on campus. Um, I was then one of the inaugural academic advising coordinators at CASA, um, our Center for Academic Services and Advising. That is how I became introduced to the peer mentor program and to CSM 101. Um, I started that um, with that all of those years ago. And then I established my office, New Student and Transition Services, six years ago. So my office um, is fairly new in the grand scheme of things, but for our seniors, um, it has always existed, which is actually kind of cool. Um, I'm going to turn it over really quick to Mariana and Ben for them to introduce themselves to you before I start with the presentation. Yeah, so my name is Mariana. I'm a junior in mechanical engineering. Um, I'm involved in the peer mentor program, um, which we'll talk a little bit more about. Um, I'm also involved in McBride um, in the honors program, and I am also involved in the club rugby team. Hello, everybody. My name is Ben. Um, I am a senior studying geological engineering, um, and I am involved in the peer mentor program as well and in the Kappa Sigma fraternity. Well, cool. so I'm going to be throwing it to Ben and Mariana throughout the presentation so that you can get the student experience on all of these things as well. Um, clearly, not only are they students, so they have been through most of these programs themselves, but they're also student leaders who have a lot of experience in running these programs. So they've got a lot of good experience to share. So I am going to share my screen. All right. So today we are talking about the early order experience. So um, as John and Ruth mentioned, we do have a very strong um, order experience here for our students from the time they walk in the door. And our programs are really meant to lay the foundation of the rest of their time here at Mines. So they're meant to not only orient them, but truly make sure that they feel like an established member of the community, that they have um, all of the tools that they need in order to be successful Mines students. Um, and we really carefully think about the way that we're layering these programs to make sure that they have everything that they need and that they feel as secure as possible when they're starting. So today we are going to be talking about our student leaders because our student leader leaders are integral to all of our programs and everything that we do. We're going to be talking about our onboarding that we did this year, so 2023, um, as well as, like I said, the student perspective as it goes along with our onboarding programs. And then we are going to be talking about hell of a welcome. So if you've not heard about that yet, that is going to be our new orientation programming starting in 2024. And then there will be time for Q&A. Okay, so it all starts with our student leaders. And it's important that I talk about this because they're truly the foundation of everything that we do. And if it was not for them, we really would not be able to um, not only do our programs, but do them well and have um, our students get everything out of their experience that um, they need to. So we definitely, as the professional staff, make sure that they have all of the information that they need. We are um, setting up these really great experiences for them. But if it was not for our student leaders, they wouldn't be getting that um, peer experience that um, layer of integration and just kind of foundation of um, advice that um, I would not be able to provide since not only am I no longer an undergraduate student, it was only like three years ago that I was, but um, I have never been a mind student either. So it's a, just a, pr a perspective that I am not able to share. Um, just to give you a little bit of background, we this year have 130 peer mentors. And we had 182 camp counselors. Um, there is some crossover, so definitely many of our peer mentors were also camp counselors. But that's a huge number of student staff. I believe that we're one of the um, largest student employers on campus. So it's a big deal, um, not only the programs that we do, but what we're also doing with student leadership on campus. Our peer mentors go through more than 35 hours of training, including um, QPR, 
which is a um, suicide prevention training or mental health first aid. Um, and again, many of our students actually took on these leadership positions because of their own experiences that they had either on camp or with Ortiger um, or, you know, on campus and, and really wanted to give back. So I'm going to turn it over to Ben and Mariana so they can talk a little bit about why they each became peer mentors um, and why they wanted to work on camp and what they get out of the experience. Yeah, um, for me, becoming a peer mentor was a really big step for me. My transition was a little bit uh, weird going into college. I'm sure you all remember the lovely pandemic we had um, in 2020. Um, and just learning how to be a college student was really hard for me. Um, so the biggest reason I became a peer mentor was to uh, make other people's experiences better than mine was um, and hopefully make their transition a little bit easier. Um, specifically for camp, why I wanted to do camp was it was the first time I saw campus alive because after that COVID year, um, we came back and I um, worked that first Ordigger camp. And it was the first time I saw campus really vibrant and energetic um, and a ton of people were around. And that type of energy and atmosphere is what makes camp so amazing and incredible. Um, and it's just something I really wanted to be a part of and help make better. Um, and what I've personally gotten out of, you know, this uh, student leadership role has been how to work with the team and not just, you know, getting put in a team and kind of knowing a little bit about people, but learning how to develop connections with a team so you can work with them well. Because um, if you know people a little bit better, uh, it will make times when you're maybe a little stressed and tired a little bit easier because you've connected with this person and you know how to get the best out of them. So that's been like the number one takeaway I've gotten from this role. But I'll pass it along to Mariana to kind of share a little bit about her experience. Yeah, so um, I was a part of camp as a camper the first year that um, they did camp after COVID. Um, and camp was a really incredible experience for me. It was uh, one of my first times really opening up to people. And coming from the East Coast, I um, didn't know anyone at Mines. So um I decided to get involved in Peer Mentor really because of my camp counselors. Um, they helped me feel like I belonged at Mines, and I was so excited to go into the school year because of going to Ordinary Camp. Um, so I decided to apply for a Peer Mentor so that I could kind of give back that experience that I had. Um, and um, yeah, I decided to get involved in camp further after being a camp counselor um, for the first time um, and seeing how uh, my campers and just the first year students in general um, started opening up and finding some of their people before going into classes. Um, it was really incredible to see that. And also um, getting to have that leadership position um, for the first time leading a group of students and sharing my mind's experience um, helped me grow a lot. So um, I wanted to get more involved in camp so that um, I could help um, impact students how camp has impacted me. Um, and um, that's a lot of what I got out of the experience too. It was an incredible leadership experience um, and getting to lead such a large event um, that is like involves students and faculty and alumni and also student leaders um, was really incredible. Um, and yeah, it's helped me to grow so much and I've been able to apply those skills to other roles that I have on campus too. So just to give some context, I mentioned the peer mentor program. Um, peer mentors are leaders that run um, fall kickoff as well as co-teach a section of CSM 101. Um, and then within the peer mentor program, we have a um, leadership position, which is the lead peer mentor position. So um, after they have served as peer mentors for at least a year, they can apply to be a lead peer mentor. All of our lead peer mentors have different roles. Um, they're in charge of different aspects of our programming. And Ben and Mariana in particular were our lead peer mentors for camp. They were our camp directors for this last year. So that means that they really oversaw everything that we did with camp from um, which order or which um, engineering challenges that we were going to do to improving our reflection activities to literally um, creating the schedule and hiring all of the additional camp counselors. They did everything. So um, really, really awesome leadership program. Um, Ruth, did you have a question? 
I do. Um, before you get too far into the weeds, um, we do have a lot of faculty and staff on this call, but we also have a fair number of alums who may not really know when you say camp, what does that mean? Because more than likely when they were here, they didn't get to go to camp. We didn't have camp. So what is it? Where is it? What do you do? It's good to just kind of define these things so that we know what you're talking about. Yep. And we are getting to that in just a minute. Great. So Great. Thank yep. you. Yeah, absolutely. Any other questions before I move on? All right. Okay, so onboarding 2023. So this is what our program um, looked like for students that came in this fall. They started out with launch. Launch is our one day on campus program um, where they got information um, uh, kind of during an all day program on campus with their support networks who were able to join them. Um, most of our launch sessions were in person on campus, although we did have two of our virtual programs. Um, I'm not going to get too far into launch because those really happen during the spring between June and um, June and July. Um, really, what I'm going to be talking about for the most part is our programming that happened as of August. So as Ruth mentioned, we have Ore Digger Camp. We also had Fall Kickoff. And then there's some later programming that starts um, once the academic year starts. So Ore Digger Camp. What is Ore Digger Camp? So um, Ore Digger Camp is um, a program that brings our students onto campus and then into the mountains for two and a half days. It is a leadership and adventure program that is really meant to build camaraderie among our students. We had three sessions this year. All three of them were at YMCA at Snow Mountain Ranch in Granby, Colorado. Um, the one in the one session that we had in July was our smallest. We had about 184 campers for that one. Um, our next two sessions were at the beginning of the year in August. Uh, our August 13th session had 335 campers, and our August 15th session had 364 campers. So we had 883 total students that we took to the YMCA um, Snow Mountain Ranch this year, which is actually the most that we've ever accommodated before. Um, the most prior to this year that we ever took was about 620. And this is, was really good for us because as I'm, I'm going to be talking about at the end of the presentation, our goal is to take every student to campus or to camp. The reason for that is that Ortiger Camp by far is the best bang for our buck. Um, it is an extremely labor intensive program, but it is absolutely worth it. When you see our students coming to check in for Ortiger Camp, looking nervous, looking like they don't wanna talk to people, like they're not sure what they're doing. Um, and then by the time they're getting back on the bus after camp to come back to campus, they have a group of friends around them um, and they look confident, they look excited, Excited. Um, it is really a meaningful and powerful program. So it is by far to me um, one of the most important things that we do. But I am going to turn it over to Ben and Mariana for them to talk generally about what happens at camp and why that may be helpful for our new students becoming Ordiggers. Yeah, so um, camp is a ton of fun. Um, we load the buses and um, our camp counselors um, start to help uh, all the campers learn the fight song. Um, and when we get there, we have a big welcome um, where all the students will hear from the president and from different alumni that are helping. Um, and as well as we had some previous camp directors that um, uh, came back to help at camp. Um, and they also, all the students get to meet all of the camp counselors, they introduce themselves in front of all of camp and say some stuff that they're involved in. Um, so it's a great way to um, kind of get to know um, both like student leaders and um, some faculty and the, and the president um, to, start, to start off camp. Yeah, um, we do. We also do a number of different activities throughout the two and a half days. They're up at the YMCA. Um, so they do different reflection activities where they're thinking about, you know, what they want to get out of their college experience and further on. And then they do some engineering activities, which are a great way to build uh, team, team working skills and communication skills. 
Um, they usually have some sort of twist, you know, because nothing ends up working out the way you imagine, especially at mines when things can be a little bit harder. So it's a great lesson to learn early on. Um, we also do a little more lighthearted activities. We do a big group campfire where we get most of the camp together and they roast s'mores. Um, and then we have a tradition that the morning of the last day, we do a sunrise hike with anybody who wants to go. Um, and we stand up at the top and we sing the fight song as the sun is coming up, just helping build, you know, that mind's affinity and that sense of pride that we all have for mines. So. And so, yeah. Oh, go ahead, Mariana. <laughs> um, so yeah, in, in general, um, it's really helpful for students to attend camp because it's, it gives them a lot of opportunity to both meet some of their peers, but also um, connect with some of their, um, some of some student leaders and um, their camp counselors and school knowing that they have a support system. Um, as well as like, I mean, you have a lot of opportunities to step outside of your comfort zone. And I mean, when I went to the camp, I was very shy and introverted and it was an opportunity for me to kind of step out of my shell a little bit. Um, and lots of students coming into minds are that way. Um, so it's a great um, way to start developing that support system and um, kind of push yourself. Yeah. Uh, and circling back to that affinity, um, it's a really special community of camp counselors that all care about minds and the minds culture and community and want to make it better and just these new students being around that atmosphere kind of infects their mindset if you will um, and kind of builds that within them and a lot of campers end up coming back wanting to be camp counselors and this like wonderful cycle of people wanting to better the minds community just continues and continues so yeah so president johnson when we first started talking about doing or digger camp um his biggest thing is he wanted to make sure that we were providing vertical connection for our students. And Ordigger Camp is really the first time that we're able to do that. So they're coming in, obviously, as first year students, but then their camp counselors are upper class students. And they're also joined by faculty and staff and alumni across campus. So they have the opportunity to really get to meet all kinds of people in a very low stakes kind of way, um, which really starts building that community early. Um, ben and Mariana, anything else you would want to add about camp before we move on? I'll add that um, President Johnson loves to go play gaga ball at camp with the students and um, they love it as well. And he'll go summer tubing with them. We have a summer tubing hill um, that we uh, had was as our big camp activity. So, um, but yeah, that's, Yes, he is very engaged for sure. All right, so next we're going to talk about fall kickoffs. Fall kickoff is our orientation program that we have, or we had this year at the very beginning of the year, um, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and Sunday prior to classes starting. So it is a mix of activities that we have for our students, um, and I'm going to go through some of this for you. So the first activity that we have um, for all of our students together was a thing called Playfair. So Playfair was Thursday night of fall kickoff, um, and it is where we brought all 1,500 plus students out to the IM field, and we basically had a huge icebreaker for a couple of hours. So it's really fun. Um, they play silly music, they ask funny questions, and it's really a chance for all 1,500 of them to be together and to start learning about each other. Um, so they will do things, for example, of like organize yourself by birth month, and you have to run around the field and find the people who are born in your same birth month, or organize yourselves by number of siblings, um, and you have to run around and find people who have the same number of siblings as you. Um, just lots of, of fun ways to have our students start to just very easily get to know each other and to look around and see their, their peers all around them um, at a, on a large scale. We then have the M climb. I'm sure a few of you have heard of the M climb before, um, but my office is um, along with Blue Key, um, the manager of this program, which we're very grateful and honored to have a part in. Um, this year we had about 1700 walkers at the M climb between new undergraduate students, graduate students, um, new faculty and new staff were also invited to walk. 
And then we had more than 500 students lining the mountain um, as parts of our club clubs and orgs. So our students definitely felt a sense of welcome um, in doing the M climb. Now, something that you may or may not know is that in the last few years, we've had so many or such a large incoming class, we've actually had to divide the M climb into two waves. So we have a wave that leaves at 7.30 in the morning and a wave that leaves at 8.30 in the morning. And that's so that we can accommodate all of the students getting up onto the M and putting their um, rock up on the mountain as they would like to. Um, and it actually has been working out really, really well. Um, so we had a great M climb and we brought everybody back down in record time this year, um, which I'm also very proud about. Um, we also, for the first time this year, did a program called Hearts and Gears. So we worked with actually Leah Franklin um, in the McNeil Center for Entrepreneurship and Innovation. This was her program or their program, but it was actually nestled or embedded into fall kickoff. Our first group of students that went to one of the August camps came back and were able to um, participate in this program where they were doing kind of real-time problem solving, um, working on community-based programs for transportation in the city of Golden. So Leah put together an amazing program for them and it was so successful and so cool. Um, we're talking about ways that we can expand that to our entire first year class. Um, so more to come on that, but it was very popular for our students. Um, we also had speakers as part of fall kickoff. So um, they would do info sessions where they're learning about things like Title IX and campus safety and um, community standards. But then we also have um, keynote speakers. So Kate Humans, who um, runs our DINA program on campus, gave a talk about belongingness. And then we had, um, we contracted with Nissan Trotter, who is a um, community-based speaker, and he was talking about making college your home. Um, and both of those talks were very well received, um, and our students really seemed to connect with them. There's also lots of small group time that our students do um, as part of fall kickoff where um, our students are divided into groups of about 20 to 25 students. Um, that is going to be their CSM 101 group, and we'll talk about CSM 101 in a minute. But it is those students along with their two peer mentors, and their peer mentors are the ones that really lead them around um, and uh, provide them information throughout the weekend. And they do lots of games and fun things and get to know yous and activities. Um, we do a program called Dear World, which I'm going to talk more about in a second. We do the M photo. So as you can see here, we get them all out onto the football field into the shape of an M. They wear a different color shirt every year so that when they come by and see their photo in the student center, they know which one is theirs. Um, that's always a really good time because it also gets them involved early in athletics. They get to hear from David Hansberg, our athletics director, and get them excited for our athletics seasons. Um, they do a service project. So um, all 1,500 of our first year students get divided up into groups and they do various things from yard cleanup for some of our senior citizens in Golden to um, helping with um, upkeep of maybe some of our local churches. I know that they were painting local churches this year to helping with um, our gardening center in Golden, our community garden to um, making dog toys for the local shelter. So all kinds of fun things that they do for the service project. And then they have lots of fun evening events. So everything from a silent disco to late night at the rec, uh, we keep them very busy and make sure that they are um, getting to know as much as possible about campus. I did want to really quick talk about Dear World, just because I think this is unique to, um, to mine specifically. Um, not every institution does this, but we bring an external company called Dear World to campus, and they are specifically a photographic storytelling um, company. So they lead our students through what they call the brain tattoo method, where students are asked to think about really meaningful moments in their lives, um, what kind of made them who they are today. 
And then they help them distill those stories into a few words or a sentence that they then write on their bodies and have photographed. So it's extremely powerful. Um, and it's also amazing because we really get students um, not only reflecting on who they are and what their stories are, but how they talk about their stories to their peers and how they start um, communicating you know, what were these meaningful experiences and how do I want to talk about those? So these um, pictures that I have here are a few of the photos that came out of our Dear World program this year. Um, and I think they turned out beautifully. So that was exciting. But again, I'm going to turn it over to Ben and Mariana really quick just to talk about fall kickoff and why they believe these events are helpful for students and maybe also for the peer mentors as well. Yeah, so I can start. Um, fall kickoff was great for getting to know campus. Um, Ortiger camp for me was on campus uh, coming out of COVID, but um, fall kickoff was, um, especially this year, um, as a um, peer mentor, it re is really helpful for um, getting to know campus before going to classes. Maybe you get, can get a little campus tour in there. Um, also, um, getting to know the the group, small group of people that you're walking around with that will be um, in one of the first classes that you take your first semester, CSM 101, which um, we might talk about a little later. Um, but getting to know people that will be in that class um, as a support system for you. Um, and yeah, doing doing really low stakes activities. And um, uh, also a lot of the people that I met, um, I'm still in touch with, um, especially like with the M-Climb, I got to help out. Um, I was on the mountain shooting water at people this year, uh, which was really fun. But um, you get to know a lot of other um, students and peer mentors during that time. Um, so it's a great I, I it's my favorite part of starting starting off the year. I feel like you really start off the year strong, um, both as a student leader and as a um, as a student. Yeah, I think fall kickoff is super helpful for our first year students because it can be a little difficult to develop connections with people in a, kind of a classroom school environment. Um, you know, you're a little you're a little stressed out with school and you're focused on assignments and you're not really putting as much effort into just building those genuine and um, natural connections with people. But fall kickoff is a really awesome time for them to just kind of enjoy themselves, experience new things, have fun, and just develop those connections naturally with other students that are going to be really helpful when they do get into the semester and, oh, I have two exams this week. Like, oh, but I have these friends I met during fall kickoff that I can go study with and relax with. Um, so it's a really great time for them to develop those connections. Um, in terms of being a peer mentor, um, it's a really awesome time to share your experiences with uh, the first year students. Um, I know my peer mentor has shared a lot about like places you can go in Golden to go have fun, not just strictly like on campus, but other things to do as well to keep yourself busy. So. Hey. So then we move into our later programming. After fall kickoff is wrapped up, um, they start CSM 101, their first week of classes. CSM 101 is our first year seminar program. We run 64 sections of CSM 101 in the fall, plus a section of CSM 201, which is meant specifically for transfer students. Um, this is a required course for all of our students. It's a one credit hour course. They're required to complete um, before graduation. Um, our lessons range from campus resources to connecting to faculty to identity um, to registration. So basically anything that is going to help them um, socially and emotionally and physically be a successful student on campus. Um, they also have access to Elevate Your Minds programming. So Elevate Your Minds is a calendar that we keep, which includes um, all of the programs that are happening on campus for the first 60 days. Um, studies have shown that the first 60 days on campus is really when students are deciding whether or not um, campus is for them and whether or not they feel like they're going to be successful and whether or not they're going to stay. So we want to make sure that even though our orientation programs are over, that they don't aren't left feeling like, well, there's nothing here left for me. And they have access to all of the programs that are happening on campus in that first 60 days. 
Um, as part of that, we do a first day of school event. So on the first day of school, we set up a um, photo booth so they can take pictures of themselves and write first day of school um, on their dry erase board and send the pictures to their families and friends. Um, we also hand out snacks and some school supplies. So that's always really fun. We love taking part in that. And then finally, we do our current peer mentors have access to professional development programming throughout the fall semester. So once a month, they do ongoing um, professional development, and that's in addition to those 35 hours of training they already got. But then applications for our new peer mentors for that next academic year open every November. So that's really a full circle moment for us because all of those students that we just oriented um, and got settled into their first semester then have the opportunity to apply and do exactly what their, their peer mentors and their camp counselors did. Um, so that's always really exciting for us as well. I want to talk really briefly before we um, open it up for Q&A about what is happening for next year, because all of these things that I just talked about um, are going to be changing slightly um, for next year, but in really, really possible ways or um, positive ways. So I know how program are, how powerful our programs are. Um, we hear from our students all of the time how helpful they are, that they just would not feel as prepared and integrated if it wasn't for going through um, launch and Ordigger camp and fall kickoff. But we also know that due to the timing of some of those, so launch and order camp in particular, they were not accessible to everyone. Um, we never had more than 50% of our student population participating when we were doing the previous model of having things scattered throughout the summer. Um, because we know these programs are so powerful and so important, we knew that we needed to create a model that would provide our services to everyone. So that is what Hell of a Welcome is. So starting in 2024, we are doing a Welcome Week model, which is going to allow all of our students to go to Ordigger Camp and participate in um, the pieces of launch that they may have missed. So we will no longer be doing launch orientations during the summer. Those will now be kind of moved into this Welcome Week model. We are going to move everyone to campus nine days prior to classes starting. We're going to rotate them all through Ordigger Camp and on campus rotations. So they're going to do some of what they would normally do during fall kickoff. Um, they would also do some of what they would normally do during launch, during those on campus pieces. Um, so things like our info sessions, they will have access to a major fair, a resource fair, um, things like that while they're on campus and then they will all have the ability to go to Ordigger Camp. Um, then once everybody is back from doing their rotation starting on Thursday, we're going to do our regular um, historic uh, programming. So things like our M climb, our class photo, our service project, we will still be doing all of those in large groups. And then Sunday, which we are very excited about because we know our students are going to be very excited about. We actually have a no programming day on Sunday. So previously we had kept everyone so programmed throughout the weekend. They were busy through Sunday that by the time classes rolled around, they were exhausted. And this gives them Sunday off so that they can um, you know, find their classes or go to the bookstore or take a nap um, or go down to the creek or whatever it is that they want to do to feel rested and prepared before going into classes on Monday. So we are equally excited, beyond excited, thrilled. Um, we feel so lucky and also very nervous as we move into this programming model for next year. Um, but we know that we also have amazing alumni and campus partners on campus that are going to help us make this successful. So I wanted you all to have an understanding of what all of our programming looked like this year, but also what our plans were for next year um, before we turn it over for questions. I have a question. Yeah. I always have a question. Um, <laughs> if I, uh, as a first year student, if for whatever reason, I wasn't able to go to Ordigger camp, can I participate as a sophomore? 
No, unfortunately, it's for brand new students on campus. So you can't go, you can't decide like as a sophomore or junior that you want to go back with our, our new incoming classes. Now, that being said, transfer students can participate. So if you're a new transfer student and you're a sophomore or a junior and you want to come to camp, you absolutely can do that. Thank you. Yeah. I also have a question. Yeah. This was uh, wonderful, Jessica and, and Ben and Mariana. Thank you all for doing this. What a robust amount of programming. Unbelievable. Um, for this coming year, I guess this is more of like a selfish question of our programming as well, but for your new plans for Ordinary Camp, is your plan to try and get as close to 100% incoming and transfer student participation as possible? We are hoping for 100% participation. Now we will have an opt-out um, pathway if someone is um, physically or emotionally unable to participate in Ortiger camp um, or you know has extenuating circumstances we'll have an opt-out program for them um, but for everyone else the plan is that everyone else participates amazing It'll yeah so fun. yes um and then just a kind of follow-up question just for for ben and mariana um from what your experience has been as a, a peer leader and then also like all the other peer mentors and everybody who's running camp, do you find that like the student relationships you develop with those incoming students, do they last past or digger camp? Like are any of them wanting to go out to like lunch with you and pick your brain about classes or professors or majors or anything like that? Like do, do you all kind of develop relationships as like leaders that carry on past that camp? I'd say for sure. Um, I still see, well, first, even just like the little things, like people that I've had as campers or as mentees will say hi to me on campus all the time. Um, and I'll run into them in different clubs and stuff too. Um, but yeah, I've had multiple campers and mentees that have been in my classes um, for the first year seminar class um, that have reached out to me. Um, honestly, a lot of them reach out after I've already had them in class. Like it's like the class is over we don't really have class together anymore, but then they'll just reach out to me. Um, I went and got coffee with one of my um, mentees uh, a couple weeks ago, just for fun to catch up. And so um, you really do um, make those uh, vertical connections. And it's great for, I mean, um, you're there for them as a leader, but you're also there for them as a friend too. Um, so like um, the support system goes both ways. Yeah, I'll share a little bit about it too. Actually, um, two mentees I had two years ago have reached out to me, or one of them has reached out to me recently about changing his major. Um, he's thinking about switching to geological engineering. So I've been working on getting a getting a time to get a coffee with him and talk about it. And this is two years removed from when I first met him. Um, and this, when I actually did the MCOM, I did it my sophomore year. I wasn't able to do it my first year. And I went up with a group of my mentees because I was like, a lot of my friends were actually didn't really want to go. They were like, oh, we're sophomores. Like, we don't, we're not going to go. Um, and I was telling my mentees that and they were like, you should come walk up with us. So I went and walked up with them. Um, and it's just like those connections you make and they, they really desire to want to get to know you too. Like they're just as incredible people as all of our peer mentors and camp counselors. Like they want to develop those connections as well. So Awesome. Thank you. I'd like to make a, a comment on, on camp. Um, this was my first time to participate in that. And obviously when I went to school, that wasn't an opportunity. And it was pretty much when I was there, they dropped, it was kind of like you got dropped off and it's like, okay, welcome to college. Good luck. <laughs> and, and I bet it it probably, I struggled my first year. I was a five-year student and the uh, it probably took me a year to meet as many other students as these students meet at Ordigger camp. And as an alumni, I mean, it's it's fun to be part of offering something to students that, that I didn't have and I wish I had, but I know that um, um, 
I, you know, the the thirty pound rock guy. Uh, he, I met him up at camp, and you know, when I run into him on campus, I can still, you know, we still joke about some of the things like like the size of the rock that he carried up. <laughs> um, but it's, I think, for alumni, it's it's a fantastic opportunity, and I mean, I. I really appreciate the opportunity to participate in it. Thank you, Gary. We loved having you. It was awesome. Um, <laughs> along those lines, so Gary definitely was very involved in camp um, and made a lot of great connections with our students. There's going to be even more opportunity for um, camp this year and fall kickoff. Well, hell of a welcome in 2024 for people to participate. Um, if that sounds exciting right. to any of you. <laughs> and I'm wondering, can we hear more about the McNeil challenge? I don't know if Leah could talk about it or that piece that was integrated into the camp. You wanna know what we did Annette, this year or, or, for, or for next year? Well, either one, tell me about what okay what that looked like last year and yeah. maybe for <clears throat> next year. Absolutely. So so we did a, a big challenge that was based about, uh, it was around transportation and sustainability um, locally. So we partnered with RTD, um, Colorado Department of Transportation, City of Golden, and um, the Mines uh, Orcart. Um, and, had, and Gary actually helped with it as well. Um, so we had, you know, about 340 students working on the challenge. Um, and there's been some cool outcomes of that too. So the ore digger, the, the ore cart piece, um, th their challenge was to figure out what would be the best use of an app that folks could use that are in the community or on campus that would make an app a value added tool. Now I've got a group of computer science majors that are working on building out that app. We should do some testing. We'll have some testing and a prototype by November and hopefully some live tests that we can push it out in January. So that was a that was one of the cool pieces that we did. Um, and we're looking at, at next year, it would be, it'll be even a larger challenge, but we're gonna source challenges from the Estes Park community since that's where camp is. Um, so it'll be a broader scope, but um, we're already building our list and who we need to partner with up there to, to really make it a cool, meaningful experience for students. Great, thank you. Um, Leah, are those things necessarily projects that could be sustained and perhaps turn into, oh, you know what, never mind. We're talking about first year students mm -hmm. participating. You know, of course, I'm making the connection between that and like senior design, you know, right. it could be a project where it's big enough that could be a, uh, you know, a, a long term project that might involve. Right. Anyway, it sounds right. great. And that right. we, really good taste of that innovation. We, we keep in mind when we're so sourcing problems that they're freshmen that are coming in. Um, so that the technical challenge aspect of it, I don't expect a computer, they don't have to have computer engineering expertise to jump in on these problems. Awesome, thank you. Well, I would make one uh, pitch to the alums on the screen. Uh, Keep your eyes open and your ears peeled for, or vice versa, <laughs> for next year's programs uh, as we gear up and, and recruit volunteers to come and help with all these things. Um, inevitably, um, for as long as I've been around Minds, we have alumni every year who call and say, oh, shoot, you know what? When I was a student, I didn't get to do the M climb because I had football practice or I hadn't arrived on campus yet or I X, Y, Z. And they always ask if they can show up on M Climb Day and either volunteer to weigh rocks, meet and greet, and have a cup of coffee and a donut, you know, watch all the hoopla, or ideally make the climb. I mean, how fun is that? You've got two hours to you know visit with students on the way up and and participate. So I would just say. Um, Stay tuned for all that is yet to come next year. Sounds like an incredible program, bigger, better than ever. 
And as Jessica referred to, there will be opportunities and ways for everyone to connect in the way that's most meaningful to them. And on that, hey, Ben, uh, with you being a senior and graduating, are you going to come back and now be on the flip side and volunteer with us for the alumni? I will absolutely be coming back and <laughs> helping volunteer with camp. Definitely, definitely going to be the first thing I bring up to any company that wants to give me a job is I need this this set of days free so I can go and help with this. So <laughs> it's been one of the most impactful experiences of my life. So I'd love to come back. Um, that's a nicer suggestion than the one, the one that I keep throwing out there, which is how about we prevent you from actually graduating? And <laughs> I'm about that. <laughs> Both Ben's side and also the alumni side, we cannot have that. <laughs> I'd like but, to ask us early on at the beginning of both Ben and Mariana, where are you both from? Um, ben or Mariana, no, you said you were from, from, from the East Coast. So where are you from? Yeah, so I'm from Silver Spring, Maryland. So if you know DC, right at the top of the diamond, yeah. Awesome. Okay. We've got a really robust uh, alumni chapter, or as we call it, M Club there. So stay tuned for that. And, and Ben, where are you? Are you from the uh, Golden area? Are you from out of state? Um, I'm from Colorado. I'm from Fort Collins. So just an hour north okay. of Golden. Um, yeah. That's good to know. You guys are awesome. Well, it is now four minutes to the top of the hour. Uh, we want to stay on time and uh, John, do you want to start closing us out and, and I can make a quick plug for next month's program as well? Yep, I can do that. Um, well, thank you to Jessica, Ben, and Mariana for presenting. It was an absolutely wonderful presentation. So phenomenal to hear all that you accomplished. And, and Jessica, huge shout out and kudos to your team. I mean, that is an unbelievable slate of activities and you did it with true pomp and circumstance. Um, and then to Ben and Mariana for being wonderful student leaders. We truly appreciate it. And you really make the Ordigger experience um, all the more valuable. And then last but not least, thank you to everybody who is attending. We appreciate you all taking a little bit of time out of your day during a particularly busy time of year to, um, to hear about all of this. So we appreciate it. And we hope that um, you all learned something and will consider being involved with this next year. Um, alumni, we really appreciate, pre appreciate your engagement. Um, with that, Ruth, what am I missing? Um, I'll just chime in real quick to let you know what's on tap for next month. Um, you all got here today because you visited the lunch bunch page of our website, which is we are dot minds dot edu. Um, we have programs scheduled through the end of the year and are busy working on populating all the programs for the spring semester. But coming up next month uh, on Thursday, October the 19th, we are really excited to uh, put the spotlight on the Minds music program. So any of you alums out there who were in the marching band or played an instrument or were in the choir uh, or were part of uh, Minds Little Theater, uh, we're going to hear from John Cullison, who is the director of that program, and uh, maybe you'll learn a few things. I was really surprised to learn recently that in addition to the choirs and the orchestras and the, you know, amazing uh, marching band that we have, which is iconic, we also offer a minor in um, audio engineering and recording arts. So when you think about, uh, you know, recording an album, recording whatever, you've got a whole cadre of engineers who are in the studio with all this equipment. Uh, somebody's got to know how to run all that stuff, right? It's it's pretty pretty intricate, pretty complicated. So we have a program that, that trains those types of folks to do just that. It's pretty cool. So you'll hear about that. Um, so join us again, Thursday, October 19th, noon to one, uh, right here. We always have Lunch Bunch on the third Thursday of the month. So uh, you can visit our website to sign up. Uh, and again, I'll always put in the plug that if you have programs or people that you'd like to learn more about or hear from, we would love to hear from you so we can uh, schedule that. So thank you all. And Jessica, again, I'll offer my thanks and Ben and Mariana, you guys are rock stars. 
right? Because you're ore diggers. All ore diggers are rock stars. So we're really pleased to have all of you in today. And uh, have a great day, everybody.